I'm Subha Thomas with uh, Wolfram Research. Uh, I will be presenting the design of a line-following robot and the deployment to this Zumo robot using the microcontroller kit. So, hello and uh, welcome to this talk. Uh, this, uh, this Zumo robot from Pololu is going to be the centerpiece of my talk. So I'll highlight the sensors and actuators that we are going to use to do the line following. So in the front of this robot is a sensor module. So that is uh, six infrared uh, LED and phototransistor pairs that can, uh, that can determine the position of this robot with respect to that line. And then the, motor, and then the robot also has two DC motors to indep independently control the left and right uh, wheels. So this Arduino Uno that is face down on the robot is the microcontroller. The newer models have the Atmega 32U4 and our kit will also work with, with that version. So let me start off with the mathematical model. The orientation of the robot with respect to the line is denoted by theta. So the objective of the controller is to keep theta zero. And the speed, the angular velocity of the left and right wheels are phi L and phi R. Okay, we, can, we can get an, uh, a kinematic relationship between these three quantities with some uh, elementary calculations. So if I hold the left wheel fixed, if phi L is zero, then the velocity of this right motor shaft is going to be R phi R, where R is the radius of the wheel. In terms of theta, there is also, because the when, when this wheel is rotating, the robot will be rotating about that track uh, is also two times yd, where yd is just this all offset and theta r prime. So theta r is theta just due to the rotation of the right wheel. And we can do something similar for the left wheel too, and we get a similar relationship, except that this time we have to have the negative sign because this wheel is going to push theta in the opposite or in the negative direction. So the net angular velocity of the robot, theta prime, is just the sum of those two terms. And we end up with this kinematic relationship. So if the two velocities are the same, then the robot is not rotating. So I'll go ahead and decompose these speeds as a common base speed phi and a differential component. So once I do that, we get what we expect, that theta dot just depends on the differential speed. So this is a, a linear model. Uh, so I can put this into a state space representation and it just depends on this ratio R over YD. So I'll convert this into a state space representation and, and uh, substitute the numerical values for these parameters. So next, let's look at the controller design for the differential input. So the controller is first a tracking, uh, tracking controller. We want theta to be zero. It is also a disturbance rejection because the disturbance comes from the track and we want the controller to negate that. So what I'll do is for robustness, I'll also add an integrator to the model. So the controller will not only regulate theta, it will also bring the integral of, uh, of theta to zero. And this model is both controllable and observable. So I can design a set of feedback gains and estimate a and estimator gains. So these values I have here for the poles of the regulator and uh, estimator, you, you typically get them by trial and error. So that's where this functionality comes in useful. You can iterate with different values and deploy it and see how the controller is, is doing. So once I have those gains, I can construct the controller using estimator regulator that will put, that will put the whole controller together. So it takes the integral of theta as the input and the differential uh, the integral of theta as the input and the differential controller as the output. So let's go ahead and verify this controller. I'm, I'm creating a small utility function that will just put systems in series. So this is the overall structure uh, of, the, of the whole system. So the reference typically is, is zero in this case. So we compare that with the actual orientation of the robot and that goes through an integrator and the estimator regulator and the control input is fed into the robot. At the other end, there is the line acts as a disturbance and then the sensor reads the updated position and that's how the controller works. 
So let's compute that loop gain. So there are two there are two uh, inputs. So there are two closed loop systems. One from one from this reference to theta. So that's the first system, and then there is also the other system going from the disturbance to theta. So what we can verify is whether the poles of these closed loop system are the regulator and estimator poles that we started with. So we can look at the frequency response of this closed loop system. And we see that for the, for the first transfer function, for the first system that is from the reference, you see it tracks well and the other uh, system is att attenuated. So basically the d disturbance is getting rejected and the system is tracking. It seems to be good all the way up to three radians per second or close to 170 degrees per second. Uh, it, can, it, it, can, it seems to be doing well. So we can also do some time domain simulations. So this one, I'm just arbitrarily giving it some inputs. You see, if I ask it to track a particular input, we see it has some min minimal overshoot and takes about half a second to settle down. You can do, excuse this is a step response, yeah, you're just doing, yeah. We can all be, we can do the same thing with the disturbance input. And whatever disturbance we give, you see again, it takes about half a second to bring the orientation back to zero. And we can do yet another simulation with a different initial condition. So if you look at these closed loop systems, the fourth state is actually the output or the or theta. So we are interested in, in this fourth plot. And again, you see after about half a second, the system settles down. Now, once we have this closed loop system, I'm going to extract the controller out of this so I can, I can deploy it. So for the controller, so what is feeding into the controller is the theta, the angle measurement, and it needs to track zero. So we are not, we are not measuring this reference from anywhere. It's just implicit. So because it's part of the system, the way we, I model it is we have a gain block of gain negative one. And then it passes through the integrator and then the estimator regulator and out comes the differential input. I have an additional block here that, that, con that converts uh, the units from radians per second to rotations per minute. That's because I'm eventually going to use a library which uses the units in, in, uh, in rotations per minute. So this is the controller in continuous time. And so to implement it on the microcontroller, we discretize it to get the discrete time controller. So again, the sampling period is, is a design parameter. You play with it till, till you get a good, a good result. Okay, so at this point, we have, we have figured out how to, how to get the differential uh, controller input. Now, the speed also depends on, a, on, a, on, the, on the base speed or the common phi. So if it is zero, the robot will not move forward. We could have an arbitrary value and then get the robot to go around the track at a constant speed. But we could also borrow a lesson from our driving experience and then uh, slow up or speed the robot based on how, how sharp a turn it needs to take. So what I have here is basically telling if, the, if theta is small, then the speed is going to be very high. And then if it's, a, if it's a very large deviation to basically slow it down. Now, if I implement this as is, what I saw was that at these transitions, the robot will accelerate and decelerate very rapidly. And then the, those transitions will become very conspicu conspicuously jarring. So what I did was pass this output through uh, I just averaged the output and then passed, passed it through a low pass filter. Okay, so to summarize what, what I have now is a differential, is a differential controller input which takes the orientation and com computes the differential input and also the blocks to compute the forward speed. So at this point, from here I can compute both the left and right wheel speeds as phi plus delta and phi minus delta. On the other side, I need theta. Now, uh, the, the sensor is not reading theta. It's reading uh, a, what's called a position value. So I need a model that will take the sensor reading and compute theta. Okay, so I'm using the library that is provided by the, by the vendor to get this sensor reading. 
so because we're using the library, it's, it's not that relevant to look at the in, inner workings of the sensor itself. We just understand the library and see how to use that for our purposes. So I'll quickly go over this. You can see it. I'll quickly go over this because this is the same process we'll be using when we actually integrate this library with the deployed code. So we create a, an object of type the Zumo reflectance sensor array. We initialize it. And then for about 10 seconds, we calibrate this. When the calibration happens, I'm going to be moving this robot across the track so it gets a good look at what is the dark line and what is the sur surrounding space. And then finally, we, we print out the individual sensor values and the position. Let me quickly run this. And so you get a sense of what the values are that are coming out. Okay, I'm just going to slide it across the track so that the sensors can get calibrated. Okay. okay, so now all the sensors are reading zero. See now the first, now just the first sensor, that's the one here is above the track and you see this first value, pick it up. And as I keep moving it, you'll see the second sensor pick it up. And there is an algorithm they have to get this net uh, position value. And as I keep going, you'll see the next sensor come up and the, and the first sensor go to zero all the way till the, till the fifth sensor. So these positions as the robot is, is moving about this track, you got to convert to an angle position. So, So that, that is, so I've already done that and, and got this data for different angles, what are the readings? And it looks almost linear. So I do, uh, I create a fitted model and use that model and use that fit as the model for my sensor. So this model basically takes uh, the raw sensor reading and converts it into an angle. So once I have that block, I can complete, I can, construct the complete uh, controller using the systems connection model, which just connects this individual subsystems. So at, at this point, I have the complete controller. So what is left is to connect these, this controller to the actual uh, input and output pins of the robot. And I'm going to do that using uh, these libraries. So the function we used, uh, the function we used to deploy the code, is uh, microcontroller embed code. So this function takes three arguments. The first one is the systems model or the controller. We have that, and the last one is the is the connection mechan mechanism or how we get the controller from our machine onto the onto the target. And because there is an Arduino Uno, it's, it's very simple. Actually, we specify what is the serial port. And so that is also taken care of. What's left is the second argument, which are the microcontroller specifications. It is in this second argument that we say what is the name of the microcontroller, what are the pins that are being used, how to configure these pins, and so on. And, but because I'm going to use the library, I'm not going to do that uh, myself. I will just configure the library and get the library to uh, to take care of the pins and to get the data. So yeah, we'll, we'll see that in a, we'll, uh, yeah. We'll see that how we are going to do that. But before that, I just want to mention that when we are specifying library code, we just directly inject code into various segments of the, of the code. We'll look at that. So to inject this library code, we have to understand what the, we have to understand something about the library. And that's what I did with that. With, the, with that sensor code. So we have to do that for all the other components that we used, that we want to use. And so I've already done, done that. This is for the sensor, this is for the motor, and this is for the button. So I'm, I'm going to use the button so, um, so I, I get some uh, time to actually unhook the, unhook the robot from the machine before I, I send it off. 
So for each, these are the header files that I should be using from the library. These are the objects that I should create. Uh, these, these are the functions that I'm going to be using in the initialization routine, and these are the functions in the loop. So I, I start by, uh, by declaring all the, all the header files, what are the objects I'm going to be using, and then it is the initialization code. So in the initialization code, what I'm doing is first I'm initializing the sensors as before, and then I'm waiting for the button to be pushed before I can send the robot off. And then this, this code is basically calibrating the sensors. Earlier I manually moved the robot across the track, but here I'm getting the robots to, the motors to, to swivel the robot above the track. So, so, so it's automating that process of moving the robot across the track. And finally, I'm bringing the, the, I'm setting the motor speeds to zero back again. And finally, I get to the, the part where the code needs to run in a loop. And this, this is where the controller inputs are actually getting coupled to, uh, to the library uh, inputs, uh, library code, and eventually to the pins of the robot. So we declare the type of these inputs and outputs to be of, ex, of, the, of type external library. And in the inputs, the last element of this list is what will get coupled to the input of the controller. So in this case, the function we're using is read line, and that is going to get coupled to the input of the controller. And if you look above, you'll see the input of the controller is the sensor reading. And so that is what is going to come into the controller. And in the controller itself, that sensor reading goes into that block and converts it into the actual angle. Something similar also for the outputs. The, the usage is the same, except that in the outputs, it's the first element in the loop that gets assigned to the output. So, the, so I have this variable called SPD. So the first output here is the differential speed. So that output of the controller gets assigned to that variable and the second one uh, gets assigned to the common uh, speed, and then this one actually goes ahead in the library and sets the motor speed. So once I have that, then I can define the microcontroller specifications, basically the name of the microcontroller, what are the files to include, input, outputs, etc. And now I'm ready for deployment. Okay, so now I have the controller, I have the microcontroller specifications, I also have the port through which the microcontroller is uh, connected to the, to the machine. And there's an additional optional argument in embed micro microcontroller embed code. And that is relevant because we, over here because we're using external libraries. We need to specify the path to the external library so the, so the compiler doesn't balk when it sees the, sees the library code. Okay, so I'm going to deploy it. Okay, so first the robot is going to turn and, and calibrate itself. Oh, you want the camera? It's very really hard to get the whole thing on the camera. It's going to just catch it when it's passing by, I guess.